In the third tutorial, I'll be showing you how to bring the 2D animation into 3D space via AI. I have to confess, I'm not a 3D modeler, at least not a good one. And this is why I appreciate the current developments in AI regarding 3D. A lot is going on right now, like this text to 3D tool, which works quite well with tangible objects. Quality could be better, but it was generated with a free version. And also, Adobe is working on something. And probably Midjourney will release a text to 3D feature in one of the next versions. As a non-modeler, this is a total blessing to me when these things get production ready. Speaking of Midjourney, journey. In tutorial number one, we prompted this not so easy to describe texture image. In tutorial number two, we brought it to life in After Effects. And I guess you would trial error prompt yourself to death if you use text to 3D to generate an abstract 3D model looking like what we've generated in Midjourney. And therefore, image to 3D comes into play. But there is also another approach if you don't use a dedicated 3D tool like Cinema 4D or Blender at all. In this last part 3 of my tutorial series, I'm gonna show you how to give some depth to the animated mid-journey image. Let's start with a simpler approach that you can achieve in After Effects only. And maybe you guessed it already, we need a depth map. We could create a depth map in Photoshop via the newer filters using Depth Blur. But obviously, it's neither a one-click solution, nor does it give you a satisfying result. So I'll switch to Zoe Depth, which is a free tool on the Hugging Face website. Here, you can drag the clean background into the input image box. It's the background with a nice topography we've created in the previous video. Click on Submit. And after some processing, you'll get a black and white image like this. This is the After Effects sequence we also created in the previous tutorial. Put the main comp into a new composition, name it Main Comp Depth, and import the depth map. Insert it into the composition, switch it off, and apply a displacement map to the main comp layer. Set the displacement map layer to the depth map. Set horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance and play around with the displacement values, which already shows you that this technique basically works, giving you a sense of depth. But you can also try how far you can go with the values until some strange distortions occur, like here. And as soon as you've found the limits, animate the values. In this case, the horizontal displacement from 144 to 0 and the vertical displacement from minus 25 to 0 as well. If you want, you can enhance the motion by animating the scale and the rotation of the layer. Looks good so far. But you can also try to generate a depth map not from the clean background, but from the original mid-journey image just to see if you can get a better result. Import it into After Effects, replace the old depth map with a new one and play around with the parameters. And indeed, it allows you higher values up to 200. And the strange distortion takes place far outside from the image center, which I think makes it less obvious. And this is how it looks like in the animation. I slowed it down so we can enjoy the parallax effect a bit longer. Nice to watch. But with a 3D model, you could set even more extreme camera angles. So let's generate a 3D model then. When we go back to Zoe Depth, you'll find this tab, which leads you to the Image to 3D Mesh section. Again, put your image into the input image box, submit again, and after a while, you'll get a decent 3D model, at least at first glance, which you can download as a GLB file. The good thing about the GLB file is that if you have After Effects Beta installed, you can instantly import and check the 3D model because it already comes with the texture correctly mapped. And the latest 3D engine of After Effects Beta at this time of recording is incredibly fast. You can easily animate the camera without any lags in the viewport. 
but it would have been an easy thing if we replaced this texture with the animated 2D sequence we've created the last time. It's not possible yet, unfortunately. Here's the simplified but same compositing process I used in my previous tutorial. With a moving camera, it's fiddly and more difficult to accomplish. If it had been done correctly, I would have traced and motion tracked all the lines. That would have been insane, especially when you think of creating multiple shots with different camera angles. And as you can see, this approach is doomed to fail, at least with this current 3D version in After Effects. So let's move on to a 3D specific tool. Although I use Cinema 4D and my channel is not 3D centric, I try to explain the process as generally as possible for those of you who use Blender, Unreal or Houdini. But I'm going to show you just the basic techniques anyway that every 3D tool can accomplish, demonstrating that with even simple techniques you can achieve expensive looking animations. And here is how I did it. Before I proceeded in Cinema 4D, I rendered the separate animated textures out of After Effects but at half speed which I thought looked more elegant and sublime. In Cinema 4D, I created very simple materials for each animated texture with 100% emission, meaning that the texture always looked the same with or without 3D lights. I assigned them to the generated model layer for layer. Having separate texture layers gave me additional control over timing and strength. Looked good when played back, but I was not so happy with how the line started. It looked not so impressive on a declining wall. I'm far from being a modeler, but my rudimentary skills were sufficient enough to sculpt the terrain to my needs. And luckily, there was no need to be precise because it was only an abstract background. So I changed the 3D model to have the electric lines start from an elevated and more horizontal spot. I also improved the horizon, sculpting it to a hilly landscape just to conceal the borders of the 3D model. If I wanted, I could have also exploited all the benefits of a 3D software. Here, I ran a little test where the animated texture of the main lines influenced the 3D geometry. And using procedural particle trails following the surface, like here, would be normally my approach if I made it completely from scratch. But using an animated texture is not less beautiful, and it renders way faster. Many cinematic opening sequences start with slow motion, super close-ups and depth of field before revealing the title. I wanted to create something like this, but very simplified using the same animation but from different camera angles. The professional approach would be to render separate passes and composite them in After Effects for color correction, additional glows or depth of field, similar like what we did in tutorial part 2. But here I was lazy. The glow for the tips of the lines could be easily accomplished in camera, and bokeh for depth of field was enabled anyway all the time. And because there were no lights in the scenes, I could turn off the time-consuming global illumination. So rendering happens in the blink of an eye. The need for compositing in After Effects was next to nothing, just using the gradient transition effect to create beautiful film dissolves. And that's it guys. And with that, I conclude my three-part series tutorial. I hope you learned at least something from it. See you next time.